Is love blind? Probably not. All right. I would say he's not the typical guy that I would go for. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cringiest love is blind moments. For this list, we're looking at the most awkward moments from this Netflix reality show. And for those of you who have yet to watch the show, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Number 10, the group dinner. I was so surprised to see him. You know, we were ready for dinner and then all of a sudden we walk in and I'm just like, holy shit. During the show's fourth episode, the couples all had dinner together shortly after learning that they'd be staying at the same resort. In a sequence not unlike the summer night scene from Greece, the men and women separate and discuss what did or did not happen in the privacy of their rooms. Although they never explicitly stated what took place, it was largely hinted at. Oh so, I pulled my back out, pulling, taking the luggage in. No, you did not. As the men were boasting about their evenings, it was clear that poor Mark wasn't exactly happy about how things were going for him. I'm being patient, but everyone else is having sex, and it sucks. Number nine, Damien and Gigi arguing. How do you know what she felt? You're Mother, not Lauren. Listen to me, stop interrupting me. Please, for the love of God. After the remaining couples all moved into the same apartment building together, they faced the challenge of having to deal with both internal and external conflicts. For Barnett's birthday, Amber decided to throw him a party and invite all their Love is Blind buddies. What's up? What's up, man? Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? While their relationship initially seemed like a couple we'd want to root for, Damien and Giannina pretty much ruined the evening when they got into a massive fight because of something awkward Damien said to Lauren. This what is what we're missing. We were wondering what was missing, social situations. It all ended with Damien leaving in a huff, leaving viewers to wonder what they were even arguing about in the first place. Number eight, Cameron rapping. Fan favorite couple Cameron and Lauren provided viewers with some of the show's most romantic moments but also some of the creepiest. When Cameron goes to meet Lauren's mom, it becomes pretty clear that he's trying to make a good first impression. I've been anxiously anticipating meeting Lauren's mom. I'm the first white man that she's dated, and also I'm the first man that she's ever introduced to her parents. But, you know, I'm gonna give her the old Cameron charm and we'll see. So what better way to impress your fiance's mother? then by not only mentioning that you were once in a rap group back in college, but to then proceed and rap in front of her. I'm feeling like a kid with you. You're my main chick, those other girls are previews. Hop in the back, rolling up, then we're free to cruise. Being that he's already pretty awkward, doing this in the interest of wowing Lauren's mother certainly doesn't seem to help the situation at all. Number seven, Amber's student debt. So I am a little less responsible than Barnett in terms of my assets. I never really worked towards the future. While some of the couples clearly had some deep and serious conversations right off the bat, the same can't exactly be said for Amber and Barnett. Despite having a strong physical connection, they were soon forced to get real about some more practical issues, including the fact that Amber had some serious student debt that she had yet to pay off. I've spent like over $200 in one spray. On makeup? On, it's expensive! <laughs> So, uh, you know. <clears throat> uh, and there's my student debt from where I never graduated college. This is the sort of info that you'd probably like to have before you ask someone to be your wife, so it's understandable why Barnett wasn't exactly pleased. I've been out of work or I was homeless for a while and I was like couch surfing between, you know, my friends' homes. Number six, the pod date. Tonight, I have something special set up for Jessica. By the show's eighth episode, Mark and Jessica's relationship was clearly unraveling despite having such promising beginnings. The first episode saw them forming a great connection in their pods, with Jessica seeming sure that Mark was the one for her despite their major age gap. Where are you from? I'm from Illinois. Me too, what part? You're kidding, I'm <laughs> from two hours west of Chicago. Go Cubby! I was about to say, oh my God, she's a Cubs fan. But things started to look less rosy as the season wore on, and at one point, Mark resorted to essentially recreating their pod dates by having them converse while being in different rooms. Why are there, wait, why is there one meal in here and one in there? <laughs> I just feel, I don't know. I guess where we're at, just kind of going back to the pods yeah. and kind of where it kind of started. It seemed like a desperate move of a man who knew this relationship was not working in the real world. Cheers. Cheers. To a very cute and thoughtful date. Number five, Jessica flirting with Barnett on his birthday. 
We already talked about Barnett's birthday, but we actually have yet to discuss the cringiest incident which took place. Despite ending up with different partners, it was pretty clear that there was still some tension between Barnett and Jessica, especially considering how he rejected her after she was convinced that he was going to propose. Is it true that you still feel the same way you felt last night about me? I don't know. But despite the way he treated her, it was evident that she still had a thing for him when she unabashedly flirted with him after a few drinks. There were 48 hours in the day. I thought about you for like 46 of those hours. Like, it was insane. The fact that he was not returning her feelings was incredibly obvious and makes this scene all the more difficult to watch, especially when she tries to imply that neither of their relationships are working. He never struck me as a person that would go for Amber. And it's he weird told me that a couple to times. see it all come together. I'm like, holy he told me that a couple times. Number four, Runaway Bride. You heard me? What happened, buddy? She ran. She ran? Though several couples were getting ready to walk down the aisle, the audience knew that it wouldn't end happily ever after for all of them. After their relationship had gotten increasingly rocky, Damien and Giannina had different ideas of what they each wanted during the wedding. While Gigi was ready to try and make things work, Damien had second thoughts. I do not. Overcome with emotion after being rejected, Gigi decided to dramatically run away. Why did she literally have to run? Where was she planning on going? Perhaps we'll never know. <sighs> I'm out of here. Get me out of here. I'm done. Number three, the Carlton blow up. As we watched Carlton and Diamond's relationship progress, we became more and more concerned about the information he was confessing to the cameras, but not sharing with his fiance. It's very touchy to decide when to reveal my sexuality to Diamond, because I'm just not sure how she'll handle it. When they went to Mexico as an engaged couple, he decided to finally reveal to her that he had relationships with both men and women in the past. But after meeting with each other the next day, he blew up right away and made the entire situation far more dramatic than it needed to be. I'm You're so defensive with it, though. Because I'm not going to subject myself to that. I have to be defensive. I'm just Nobody has fought for I me feel except about me. It. Nobody fought for me either. As their discussions went on, it became clear that Carlton couldn't be reasoned with and should probably learn a thing or two on how to be respectful towards women. Number two, Damien and Gigi's sex fight. Right now, this whole process. It's everything sped up, including the honeymoon stage. While their relationship may have begun with no physical contact whatsoever, Damien and Gigi were quick to make up for lost time when they had the chance, with Gigi seeming particularly eager. Fast forward a few episodes later, their sex life became a point of contention, and Gigi didn't mince words. You know how you tell me this is the best sex of your life? Have you noticed? that I don't return the compliment. Ouch, talk about being honest. We can't help but feel bad for Damien during this scene. Despite how much this made us cringe and probably laugh, the moment also served as a clear indication that things were not going to work out between these two. I've never initiated with you. You've always initiated it with me. That's the problem. Thank you so much. Before we unveil the cringiest love is blind pick, here are a few honorable mentions. So what, what's the worst thing that you've learned of Matt? Besides the fact that he's totally okay with farting on me. If that's the worst, if that's the worst thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it caught me off guard too. This wasn't the girl I saw in the pods. This wasn't the girl I fell in love with in the pods. I mean, we, we developed something there. And since we've gotten back. Like seriously? I said I love being out here away from everything. And then you like dug way too deep into it. What do you mean? I'm just asking a question. And, and I answered, I said, I was just enjoying living in the moment, being out here. I feel like you're just evading question. So, uh, it's looking pretty romantic in there. I'm just telling you, it's been 435 days. 435 days since what? <laughs> it's just been 435 days. What are you talking about? Yeah. I see you as my equal. And I'm just as strong as you. So I want to ask you, Damien Powers, Will you marry me? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 
Number 1. Messica If there was one breakout internet star from Love is Blind, it had to be Jessica. Jessica is a messica tonight, okay? A mess. Viewers love to hate her, but you've got to admit, she definitely made things interesting. Baby, baby. I'm, I'm good. <sighs> We're not exactly sure how anyone fell for her without ever seeing her face, considering she sounds like a baby. But hey, we never even thought about sharing a glass of wine with our dog before she did. Like, I'm not saying is that like I want you to be a parent. Just, you know what I mean? Like, I'm and I'm not telling you. Or I don't want to be your parent. Or, uh, Throughout the season, she gets drunk a lot, goes after the wrong guy, and is for the most part a train wreck. I'm gonna go after your dude. You and your dude, and I know you. I know you, baby. I know you. We're honestly pretty happy she didn't go through with her wedding to Mark because that guy deserves better. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.